Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look on how to activate WSL on your Windows computer. Now WSL stands for Windows Subsystem for Linux, which is basically going to allow you to run a Linux type terminal on your Windows computer. Now I'm going to be following a guide made by Microsoft on how to activate the whole thing. You have the link in the description, but I'm going to do all the steps here just to show you. So first up, you're going to want to check your Windows version, because if you're in version 20,000, 262 or higher you can already just open up a cmd and say wsl slash slash install and this should work i'm gonna get an error because as you can see here i'm on version 19042 but you could use it if you're on version 20262 or higher so just run the command and see if it works now let's see how we would install it manually. So first we're going to open up PowerShell. And don't forget to run it as administrator. Very important because if not, it's not going to let you do a lot of the commands that we're going to need to do. Here we have our PowerShell and we are running it as an administrator. And inside of the PowerShell, we're going to want to put three commands. They're down in the description below. Again, also in the Microsoft official documentation, but we're just going to paste this in. That's command number one. It's going to activate the, the feature of the Windows subsystem for Linux. As we can see here, it's enabling the feature. All right, and now our second command here. It activated the virtual machine for, for the WSL. Yes, WSL is being virtualized because, you know, Linux is not native to Windows. But uh, since it activates virtualization, this might give you an error if you're running an AMD system. The reason is, uh, at least in my experience, AMD systems, uh, when you're running an AMD CPU on the BIOS, virtualization is disabled. So you'll need to go to your BIOS and activate virtualization. I leave a few videos in the description on how to access your BIOS and how to activate it and everything in case you need them. Now, before we put our third and last command on our PowerShell here, we're going to want to install the this package right here, which is uh, the WSL2 update for your terminal. Now, right now, what we have installed is WSL, but version one. If we want version two, then we'll want to install this for 64 based machines. And we're going to execute the little file. Here we go. It's just really quick. And then we're going to put our last command in here, which will set uh, version two of WSL as our default so that WSL one doesn't interfere. So we can close up this. And now if we type down here WSL, we see we get our little icon, our little uh, Linux icon. If we click it, it doesn't actually open up anything because we haven't chosen a distribution for our WSL. To do that, we're going to win open a uh, Windows Store. And we're going to search for our favorite Linux distribution. If we just type Linux, a bunch of them will appear. And see, we have Ubuntu and Kali and other uh, Debian. And then you can see we have different versions of Ubuntu. You can have different versions of Ubuntu. You can even have different distros in the same computer. So you can have Ubuntu and Kali and I don't know, Red Hat, if it was available. I'm not sure if it is, but you can search for it. I'm sure in the future more will get added. So I'm just going to go ahead and install Ubuntu, which is like the most basic and the most default thing. It's already installed. Now we can do WSL, it'll open, but we can also type Ubuntu. And if we had different versions of Ubuntu, we'd hear, we would find a list here of the different versions that we'd find Ubuntu and then Ubuntu uh, 20 point something or 18 point something, whatever, or Kali if we looked for it. So you can choose between the terminals from your different distributions. Now it'll open up this terminal here. This terminal uh, will take a few minutes to load everything, and then we're going to give it a username. I'm going to do Mac, of course, and then we're going to give it a password, um, and then we'll repeat the password. There we go. So now that we have our Linux uh, terminal up and running, we can use like Linux specific commands like SSH, and then we're going to SSH to my Raspberry Pi to see that it, it is working. There we go. Now we're connected to my Raspberry Pi. Yet. We have Linux installed now. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was very useful and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.